One of the most intimidating and anxiety inducing aspects of travelling overseas is the sudden inability to communicate with the world around you. It's probably no surprise then that over the years one of the most popular questions I've got is how difficult is it to travel Japan without Japanese? Now in the run up to the 2020 Olympics many businesses across Japan are investing all their pocket money in preparing for foreign tourists. But there's no doubt the language barrier exists here in a homogenous culture where English speakers can seem few and far between. In this video we'll discuss the most common problems that will pop up along the way from public transport and dining out to some useful communication strategies that will help you break down the language barrier with the locals. But I'll start with two pieces of reassuring news though. The first is that I put a survey out on Twitter asking people if they found Japan difficult to travel without Japanese. There were 3,600 responses with two thirds saying they didn't find it difficult. Now that's great. Then again, Twitter questionnaires should always be taken with a pinch of salt, especially as I put out a follow-up survey asking people if they'd rather be a bagel or an Alaskan salmon. Within 47 minutes, 739 people have responded with 45% of respondents choosing to be be a delicious inanimate object over a living creature rich in omega-3. Uh, that should have been a clear open and shut case. Obviously the answer was salmon. The second piece of reassuring news is that I've known numerous expats living and working in Japan over the years across various sectors who have lived comfortably in Japan without knowing any Japanese whatsoever. And whilst it's not obviously ideal, it is completely doable. I mean, when I came here without knowing much of the language, I was often a little bit anxious in various situations that the, uh, the locals might get angry at me when they found out that I lived here without knowing any of the language, really. After all, I'd had travel experiences in some countries in the past where the locals had lost their temper or snapped at me for my inability to communicate in their language. Obviously, I'm not gonna name any names. <coughs> France. But not not once in my time here has anybody got angry at me or lost their cool for my inability to communicate. On the contrary, Japanese people are very understanding and fully aware that Japanese is almost exclusively spoken within Japan uh, and it is quite difficult and it takes a long time to learn. Thus, if you do make an effort and show you know some Japanese, you'll instantly win favour with the locals because you'll be in the minority of foreign travellers who can speak and use a little bit of Japanese. Better still though, English is almost everywhere these days, from restaurant menus and road signs to trendy t-shirts. Mind you, the English might not always be native speaker level of English, but it gets the job done. Take this notebook that I bought the other day, for example. Uh, it's covered in trendy, cool English expressions on the front here, like relax time and keep calm and pleasing smell. And yet the thing that gives it away that it might not have been proofread or written by a native speaker is the big word at the top where it just says dribble. Uh, dribble. It's not typically the sort of thing you'd find on a notebook back home. Uh, I don't know why they thought that would enhance the sales of the of the notebook, but nonetheless, it's English, just just not as we not as we know it. So, having just landed in Japan, typically at Haneda Airport or Narita or Kansai International, you'll find getting out of the airport and into the city a fairly easy, seamless process. Everything is wonderfully signposted. But soon after arriving at the city, problems might arise at one of the smaller stations when you look up at the map to find it is exclusively written in kanji characters. Now perhaps you'd think, oh, no problem, I'll just use the ticket machine and hit the English button and type in the name of the station. Haha, <laughs> I'm so brilliant. But wait, because you're not. For local trains and the underground, rather than typing in the name of the station, you need to know the ticket price of the place you're going. And to find out the cost of that ticket, you need the map that you can't read. Obviously, you can get around this easily by asking a member of staff, as long as you mutter the name of the station or the general direction of where you want to go, no problem. But my favourite option is just to get a Suica card or a Passmore card, which you top up with a few thousand yen. I can't tell you the cost of going anywhere in Japan or Tokyo just because I use this. So rather than knowing the cost of your ticket price, just keep this filled up with a few thousand yen every day and you're all good. Same goes for the JR Rail Pass. That's half the benefit of getting the JR Rail Pass. You don't need to worry about using ticket machines all the time. And you can get this for 500 yen at pretty much any ticket machine across Japan. I think for another few hundred yen you can get your name written on it as well. I haven't done that because I'm, I'm cheap. I would strongly urge first time travellers coming to Japan to get a SIM card or a portable Wi-Fi so you have the internet with you, mainly just so you can use Google Maps. It is the main way that I and most foreign travellers get around Japan. All the train times and all the bus times are input into it seamlessly. Honestly, without Google Maps, I don't think I'd even be here now. I'd probably be lost in a forest somewhere, scrounging for berries. Be yeah. 
As somebody who travels around Japan quite a lot, I've found that this isn't an issue at all. I think you'll have no problems with accommodation, whether you're using hotels, Airbnb, or even staying at a traditional Japanese inn. That's a lie, there might be one, one issue. If you're lucky enough to have a public bath or a hot spring built into your accommodation, you'll find that they're segregated by male and female, and sometimes they're poorly labelled as to which one is which. This could end in spectacular disaster and lots of awkward conversations with hotel staff. Uh, so what I would encourage you to do, uh, just because not only do public baths use it, but also toilets across Japan, they sometimes only have kanji characters in male and female, especially at smaller bars and restaurants. So I would actually encourage you to learn those two characters, male and female. They're probably the only two characters you'll ever need to know. Better still, you can impress all your friends and family at your next birthday party when you whip out a pen and pretend to know how to write lots of Japanese. Giving the momentary illusion that you are a genius with extensive cultural knowledge. Uh, I mean, for that reason alone, it's definitely, it's definitely worth it. As somebody who eats out, uh, well, more, more than they probably should, I tend to find in, in the bigger restaurants this isn't an issue. You will find English menus, or even then just menus with pictures on that you can point at. Typically the smaller the bar or restaurant and the further out into the countryside it is, the less likely you will find English. And in the terrifying event there's neither English nor photos you can desperately point at, uh, you are going to have to wing it. Now, I did make a video a few months ago talking about nightlife etiquette and dining out etiquette. However, the most important phrase and thing in that video is the phrase Osusume wa. Osusume wa means, what do you recommend? If you point at the menu and say Osusume wa, typically the staff will probably laugh in surprise, chuckle in surprise first. That is the only Japanese phrase that you know and then they will try and do their best to explain what it is before you enthusiastically order it. Unless of course you're a vegetarian and the specialty is pork, in which case you can just point at yourself and say vegetarian because fortunately the word for vegetarian in Japanese is vegetarian. It's kind of like the same. And that's another really useful point for dining out in Japan. Many foods, the words themselves, are gaidaigo or foreign borrowed words. Take for example beef, chicken and pork. For beef you can say beefu. For pork you can say porku. For chicken you can say chicken. And for horse you can say Prasashi. All right, there's a handful of exceptions, but you get the general idea. Take fruit, for example. Orange is orenji. Banana is banana. Apple is apuru. And cherry is shakurabu. Again, some, some exceptions. The only other two words you really need to know are beer, which is biru, and whiskey, which is whiskey. And there you have it. So don't be afraid to use guide eagle. Don't be afraid to try and say the word. I'm not necessarily saying try and pronounce those words in their guide eagle Japanese form. I'm saying try and just say the word in English and hopefully the staff will catch it and understand what you're saying. You'll find in the absence of English conversational practice at school, most Japanese people do tend to lack confidence in speaking and listening to English. To talk a bit more about this, along with the essential four Japanese phrases you need to know before you come to Japan, I'll now hand you over to a real life Japanese man who stole a British accent. Um, even though uh, we learn English six years, um, uh, from junior high school to high school, somehow uh, we can't speak or listen. Um, so what you have to do when you come to Japan is don't make sentences long. For instance, uh, some people like me, when you ask if the food is good or bad, you can say, is it good? But when you say, is it good? It sounds like one word for Japanese people. So you can just take one word, one most important word in, in this case, which is good. So say good or bad. Just take one word and they'll they understand you. Instead of saying why is the toilet, you can say toilet? Where? Can you speak English? Just say English, okay? And then so make it like really simple that they'll they'll get you. So there are only four phrases that you have to know when you come to Japan and that, that will get you by. First one is konnichiwa. And that's like hello, as everyone knows. But second one is uh, I'm sorry or excuse me. Um, that is sumimasen. And then thirdly uh, is thank you, which is arigato. Not like arigato, arigato is just say, say flat or with a facial expression of thank you, of course. Lastly, uh, what you have to know is when you don't understand, when you don't know things, you can say wakarimasen. 
And that is, that means I don't know or I don't understand. So these are four phrases that are useful phrases that you might be um, want to use, uh, what you might want to use when you come to Japan. So some useful communication strategies from Ryotaro there. One thing I'd like to add is that whilst Japanese people tend to be pretty shy and pretty reserved, uh, they're also extremely helpful and selfless in the event you need some help or assistance. Never be afraid to ask somebody on the street or at a convenience store for help if you need it. In the past, I've had shop staff stop working, stop what they're doing, and draw me an elaborate map of where I need to go. And don't be surprised if some shop staff even stop working altogether and like escort you down the street it's happened to me numerous times over the years. Uh, when it happens, you feel incredibly guilty, but uh, yeah, don't be surprised when it does. People here are surprisingly selfless, and it's, that's one of the best things about Japan. Just make sure you carry a bit of paper so somebody can draw you an elaborate map. Uh, I guess that's as good a reason as any to get to get a dribble notebook. Yeah, dribble. There's a, I've noticed there's a dribble coffee maker there. Look at that. What's all that about? Are they making coffee from dribble? What would that taste like? I don't I don't even want to know. Be careful what notepads you buy in Japan. I mean, this costs 100 yen, and look at all the time I've wasted trying to make sense of the strange, wacky English on the front. All this dribble business has led me down a spiralling dark hole into nothingness. So yeah, be careful what notepads you buy. So I hope these quick tips have been useful. If you're travelling to Japan and wondering how much it's going to cost, you can check out our video, How Expensive Is It To Travel Japan? which gives you a breakdown on everything from food and accommodation to transport and the JR Rail Pass. But for now though guys, I hope you have an amazing trip to Japan. Many thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. You're what? Like on TV.